We are always looking at the same things. We are always looking at Picasso, Van Gogh, Mondrian, always the same names. There were thousands and thousands of artists just as good as these, or in my opinion, much better than these. So I'm going to show you examples of painters. Nobody knows this man. Who is Albert Bierstadt? Tell me. Of course not. Let's open one of his images, please. These paintings were made mostly from imagination and memory. Until the 19th century, 99% of all the paintings you see in museums, they were painted from memory or from imagination, including the Mona Lisa, the frescoes from the Sistine Chapel. Very rich people were always busy doing war. They didn't have time to sit and pose for a painter. So what painters would do is they would make quick sketches from reality, what were called studies. And then they would take those studies to the studio and paint based on the studies and based on memory. Okay? Next image by Birchstadt, please. Another example. You can see the magical qualities of the light. It's like a dream world. Because again, reality doesn't look like this. This transcends reality. Poetry. There is a poetic quality about good classical painting. Next artist. Of course you don't know this artist. Yeah, who knows these people? Ivan. I uh, look, Amazon, Amazon, but pay attention. I could not find one single good photo of the painting in official museums. Mm. Even the museums that have this painter don't have the paintings on the website. Mm. <laughs> This is happening with classical masters of the 19th century, being removed from public viewing. Again, painted from memory and imagination. Next image. It's a shipwreck. The boat is going to sink. The movement in the water. I mean, this is better than Turner. Everybody is looking at Turner, and nobody knows this painter. Yeah. Next image by him. Look at the quality of the transparency of the water and the texture of the foam. Again, what website is representing him? Canvas Star. This is shocking. Why aren't curators, museums and collectors exhibiting this kind of art? Now, next image. I put a few by him because he's very popular in Turkey, but in the West, nothing. Beautiful. The quality of the light, the movement. And they're asking for help, who knows? But the disaster has happened. And finally, one more image by the same artist. All these fantastic painters are being extremely badly photographed. This is shocking, because even an iPhone can do a better photo than this. <laughs> Contemporary artists, contemporary curators, contemporary whatever, they're taught since the beginning to despise this type of painting. They are told that this is not real art. Real art must be a pile of rubbish in the middle of the Guggenheim. <laughs> so, another artist I'd like to show you. Oh, Gustave Courtois. Yes, this is Dante with Virgil looking into hell with all the dead souls asking for help. Look at the incredible expressions, the psychology, the hyper-simplification in the shadows that I was teaching you before. It's so important. K-pop generation would be painting the lips, the eye, the ears, and totally kill the mystery, and totally kill the poetry. John Martin. Finally, one big museum is showing his work, Tate. It's the end of the world, and these paintings are apocalyptic. You have everything from volcanic explosions, to lightning, to earthquakes. And of course, little people there are nothing in front of nature, and in front of God's wrath, God's anger. Of course, all these paintings were made from imagination and from memory. 
I don't know if it's possible to zoom in a little bit in the central section. All the rocks, all the textures, all the beautiful reflections of colors, all painted from imagination and memory. So next image, you see a man climbing a stone. Let's enjoy all the sections. You have a river that you cannot cross. The water is too violent. Up there, you have very scary mountain peaks and cliffs. Nature in this type of painting is dangerous. Nature can kill you, and it can. It's real. <laughs> but again, the beautiful haunted quality of this painting comes from the hypersimplification of shadows. All the shadows in this painting, they're practically flat. And that simplification creates the mystery. So one more image. It's a biblical story. The destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah that comes in the Bible and maybe the Quran speaks about it. Yeah. The incredible quality of the fire, the destruction of the buildings. Can we zoom in there if you click yes? Oh. Classical art is much more than just copying. It transcends that. This man running in the lava is going to die, of course, but he's still trying to escape. He has no chances, he's going to die. The composition is divided by the lightning that is pointing to that man. You must learn the art of composition. Composition is how to put things so they direct your attention to the places you want them to go. I wish this lecture was two hours. <laughs> this painting I'm showing you now, this is before the Bach course. The sleep of Endymion. Do you know the Greek story of Endymion? No? So I will tell you a story. Endymion was the most handsome man in the world. He was so handsome that the goddess Moon, she fell in love with him. Selene, she was attracted to him. So the Moon didn't know what to do because she wanted him, but at the same time he's immortal, he's going to die. What did the Moon do? She put a spell on Endymion. So he falls asleep until eternity and in his sleep he doesn't age he stays forever with his looks because the goddess of the moon is very shy she's very prudish she's conservative <laughs> during the day she hides the body of endymion with the trees during the night when the moon comes out without anyone seeing she sends the wind Zephyrus, which is this boy, with wings. And the wind opens the branches of the trees so that the light of the moon can come and kiss Endymion. Oh. Alright, so this is the sleep of Endymion. If you could zoom in into this section, the quality of the light, again, it, the poetry of the light, and this was painted by an artist that was maybe 21 or 22 years old when he did this painting, because it's classical technique, of course. They could do it. All right, let's try to save time. Next image, Leon Bonnat. In my opinion, he's one of the best painters in history to represent anatomy. If you could please zoom into the feet. Thank you. I find it absolutely shocking that there isn't one single good photo of this masterpiece. All the photographs I find, they're really bad. I saw the original. The original painting is spectacular. The photos never do justice. Even an iPhone could do better picture than this. Some of the best paintings in human history. Next uh, painting by Bona. Look at the anatomy. In good paintings like this, you can even feel the different textures. Sometimes the skin is very soft. The bone is very hard. Bona is another amazing example of good classical painting. Nobody knows him. Nobody knows any of the artists I've been showing you because you keep looking at the same names always and always again. You are always served 
the same food and you keep eating it. it it's coffee susu every day, coffee susu, coffee susu, coffee susu. <laughs> which is my favorite coffee by the way. <laughs> I'm having coffee susu every day. It's the same with painting, we're always looking at the same paintings, we are not learning from different styles. This is again a biblical story, it's the story of Job. And Job is tested by God. The devil and God, they're betting. By the way, gambling is haram, so I don't understand these stories. <laughs> but the devil says, I bet that if you send a lot of diseases and a lot of misfortune to Job, he is going to curse you. He is going to stop worshipping you. He will be tested. And God sends everything. Poverty, disease, all his children die, the wife dies, everybody dies, and he's left alone on top of rubbish. He had nowhere else to live because his village sent him away. Nobody wanted him anymore, no friends, nothing. But he's still praying to God. So, let's go to the next image. Contemporary art didn't create anything. And classical painters could easily paint like modern artists. This is an example of a classical painting that was left in the sketch stage. But it has all the qualities that we nowadays say it's very expressive. Contemporary artists didn't create anything new. When you look at contemporary art with brush strokes, and that was not a revolution. Every classical painter used to paint like that in two circumstances. Or during the sketch to make a study, or when the painting is left unfinished. In the beginning, classical paintings look like this, because you give the first brush strokes to get the, um, the paint. And then you layer, you put paint on paint on top of paint on top of paint until you get the result you want. So I just wanted to show you another surprise for you, because you probably thought this painting is from the 20th century and, you know, and very modern, and etc. Now let's look at Bastien Lepage. You know the story of Joan of Arc? She was the French leader. She heard voices that she thought were from God, commanding her to go and liberate France from the English. So she becomes a general, she goes to war, she leads the army. And this is the moment where she's listening to the voices. And if we could zoom in into her face, the eyes, the haunted quality, because she's receiving messages from heaven. If you zoom out again, you have figures that come from heaven and are speaking to her. She doesn't see them. She doesn't see the ghosts, she doesn't see the spirits, but she hears them. Do you understand? Yes. I could speak about this painting for another hour, but no. Next <laughs> image, please. Next. If we go down into the feet, obviously these shoes are too big for the child. What I want to tell you, and I'm almost concluding this lecture, I will tell you what I want to say, but with the next painter. If you could show me the next three images, and then I'll make a conclusion. But remember those boots. Bouguereau. That's again Dante and Virgil in hell. Observing the souls fighting. Look at that knee. The expressive quality. Look at this. Can we zoom a bit more in the hand? You really feel the texture of the flesh. Just to complete the other two images. This represents the knight. And the knight, she's appearing with the creatures of the night, like bats and stars. But the knight is still uncomfortable because there is still too much light. So this is the beginning of the night, but she's still, she's still fighting the day. She doesn't like the day. And you have this wonderful movement of the fabrics. She's wearing black, of course, because she is the night. The beautiful silhouette of the fabrics. Very elegant shape. 
beautiful feet, fantastic. So stunning anatomy. Have you ever tried to draw feet? Yes. Okay, you know it's not easy, right? Yes. Such beautiful position of that second foot. I really love this shape and how it's resting on top of the other foot. Now, let's look at his last image, the Pietà. And we can zoom in, please. The spectacular facial expressions. The facial expressions, I really want you to think of the psychology. They all have a soul. They all look like they're alive. Most contemporary art paintings, they look dead. They look like silicon people, plastic people, because that's what we are becoming, unfortunately. But you look at 19th century paintings, they're so human. They're so psychologically charged. The expressions. Let's make a summary. Remember the boots. I just want to say one thing. Classical painting, if there is one thing that defines classical painting, is that it touches all the strings that constitute everything that it means to be human. Imagine a musical instrument that has different strings, you know, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, do. A, B, C, D, E, F, it depends on your system. Classical art touches everything. So, let me explain. It has to be aesthetically sublime, beautiful. Ugly, it's irrelevant in classical art. It has, it has to be aesthetically compelling. It has to be ethically relevant. All the paintings have meanings and symbols, and usually it's about ethics, it's about morality, it's about higher values. That boy with the very big boots, of course it was a critique on poverty and how unfair life is in 19th century France. So, ethically relevant, aesthetically sublime, technically sophisticated, intellectually compelling. Anything you can imagine that makes a person it's in classical art. <laughs> Contemporary art, no. Usually they choose just one thing. Or it's just funny. Ha 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 ha. Nothing else. But aesthetically zero. Technically zero. I mean, most people cannot paint anymore. So the skill is zero. Even a child can do it. Um, ethically, let, let's not even talk about that. There's no ethics. It's just a joke, for example. Or, another example, political art. Then it's all about the message. But it's so ugly. And it's so badly painted. And it's so... You got me. Yeah. Now, in classical art, and I repeat, and maybe we can zoom out just to look at the whole composition again. You have everything that it means to be human represented in, in this kind of paintings. For example, they trigger your empathy. You become a more empathetic person because you are feeling the suffering, especially the suffering of the mother of Jesus. The dignified way that she keeps her emotions. She's not crying openly, but of course the tears are coming down her cheeks and the eyes are red. And contrast that with the almost joyful, ecstatic face of Jesus. Because he's already in heaven. Do you understand? Human feelings contrasting so powerfully. I want you to look at contemporary art and try to find this. You don't find it. Usually it's a lot of self-portraits by artists totally obsessed with themselves. Narcissists, you know, they paint themselves, they paint, they paint, they paint. And when they paint other people, they look like uh, masks or uh, toys. They don't look human. So I, 
I am going to conclude today's lecture with this reminder that I see humanity very quickly losing its own humanity. We are all becoming stupefied by our stupid phones. And I mean it. We are really becoming ignorant. Ignorant, blind, deaf, <laughs> shallow. And in a world where everybody wants to be an instant celebrity just because, for no reason, people are famous just for being famous. They don't create anything important. They're not talented. Zero talent, zero intelligence, but they have millions of followers on Instagram. This is the current state of affairs. And you, as university students, you have a duty, you have the obligation of fighting that back. Because you are meant to be the next wave of intellectuals. Not the next wave of Instagram followers and, and all that rubbish. So you have the obligation to open your eyes also to the art of the past. You have an obligation to know history of art. You have to understand that even what you are doing nowadays only exists because these people, these people mastered art. Wake up. Thank you very much.